I will talk about uh, shear jamming of dense suspension today. Uh, this topic I actually I focus on last uh, five years, so important for me, and I try to focus on single aspect, uh, but I hope, I believe uh, this makes things clear. So, and now this slide shows uh, role of uh, rheology to uh, fluid mechanics. So, the rheology means uh, material response. And so, as I say, fluid flow, and uh, uh, of course, different material flow differently. So, uh, we need to specify uh, physics, micro scale physics, how they flow. And uh, striking difference to uh, Newtonian fluid is colloid is heavy, uh, big and slow. So time scale can be one second. And the flow scale is, of, of course, depend on flow rate. But anyway, uh, this is why uh, this is very, uh, I say, constitutive modeling is difficult because this is far, uh, far away from equilibrium, so non-equilibrium state. And if suspension is very dense, um, a little bit uh, as aspect, I mean, uh, we have to consider. Uh, this is too dense, so solid fraction is more than 50%. And, uh, but of course, this may flow, so um, this should be a part of fluid mechanics, but many, many things is from solid. And uh, this makes it uh, unwelcome things we have to introduce to fluid mechanics. And, uh, just uh, introduction slide, I just uh, remind you this uh, very important contribution by uh, Professor Akribos and uh, Gada Maria, and this emphasizes the importance of shear-induced structure, microstructure. And as you see, uh, shear rate is controlled constantly plus zero minus. <coughs> then stress response is not immediate. This is not purely viscous fluid. Some microstructure is organized. And you can see some uh, compatibility. Compatibility means uh, the response is, sorry. Um, so response is uh, different from here. The direction is change. Then uh, microstructure uh, revealed again. But if the uh, flow, uh, again, uh, flow, reflow in the same direction, then uh, st uh, stress response is immediate. Uh, my, my structure uh, building can be seen in simulation like this. Anyway, this is difficult to see, so I also visualize the contact bond. And this is just 40%. So system is not completely, uh, network is not completely uh, full in the space. But anyway, you can see some uh, building of the microstructure over strain, one or two. If this is just 10% more, then microstructure is more dense. Contact network is more dense. So, yes, then this is a, a, a suspension rheology. And to understand a bit more, one step more, uh, it's good uh, to uh, get the idea from granular physics. In this symposium, actually, some session is granular physics and some session is suspension rheology. And this is a good opportunity to focus on the uh, connection between granular physics and uh, suspension rheology. And this is a phase diagram uh, proposed by Bob Berenger and Bruburu and Max B. And uh, they also discuss about uh, jamming, shear jamming, fragile and jamming and jump the phase. Today, uh, this is a granular uh, result of granular disk, and, but I uh, try to uh, convey same things. Uh, I, I try to uh, investigate same things in the colloidal uh, dense suspension modeling and try to make clear uh, how does the shear jamming happen and uh, this kind of jamming, shear jamming is possible without friction or such things I try to answer today. And before uh, going to the modeling, just I also uh, present the context here. So this phase diagram is very similar to uh, the phase diagram which recently we, uh, we proposed for uh, shear thickening suspension. So we, uh, 
the curve, uh, we also uh, identify uh, this domain is shared jammed domain. Then we also uh, have a flow uh, in this unjammed un phase, uh, viscosity is continuously increasing or discontinuously increasing in shear rate. This is stress. But anyway, uh, this is very similar. But uh, what is fragile state or this shear jam is same or such things is not clear. So uh, I will talk about this. Now, obviously, um, uh, difficult aspect is coming from this uh, viscosity divergence. So uh, if everything is flow, it's okay, but um, my subject is very close to this boundary to solid. And uh, all of you know uh, viscosity, uh, I mean, colloidal suspension flow uh, up to uh, maximum volume fraction. And this may be with the term with uh, um, jamming point. And uh, this jamming point may depend on uh, some detail of particle particle interaction. Now I have a para one pa parameter to control tangential force between uh, contacting particle, so static friction. So if it is uh, very slippy, uh, maximum volume fraction can be 64%, but if you prevent uh, smooth sliding, then this maximum, uh, maximum volume fraction can be lower. And this is, uh, this component we can uh, assemble uh, and introducing some stress dependence, then we can reproduce some shear thickening. And uh, uh, so shear jamming is uh, today's uh, focus, my focus. When I go back to the literature, uh, Michael Kate introduced some concept of, for constitutive modeling. So he introduced concept fragile matter. And the idea of uh, fragile matter is like this. Main part is this stress structure compatibility. What I mean is if uh, material flow in this way and if it get jammed, but if you change the stress compression axis, it may flow again. This is a one uh, component of the uh, aspect of this non-Newtonian fluid uh, near solid. Maybe this is natural, but uh, I won't. I, my simulation uh, method uh, can actually reproduce this and clarify this concept more. So uh, I will propose, uh, okay, just I pr will present a simulation model. And this simulation model is really uh, rely on uh, previous uh, work by uh, John Brady, Professor Brady here. This overdamped uh, dynamics is very different from a typical molecular dynamics simulation. I mean, particle is not point, not molecule. They have a finite size and surrounded by viscous fluid. So uh, inertia is really totally negligible. And this kind of framework is really nicely uh, formulated uh, in stochastic dynamics. And I, my starting point is this stochastic dynamics. And this uh, deformable simulation cell is also a part of uh, stochastic dynamics. And uh, today, uh, to focus on, uh, to study, uh, investigate, <laughs> Uh, shear jamming, uh, I just present stress controlled algorithm. This is essential because we cannot impose sh uh, sh sh how say, gamma dot equals zero, shear rate equals zero, being uh, shear jammed state. I mean, we need to impose stress. And uh, th that one, uh, method itself uh, we introduced in 2015, uh, sorry, 14, sorry, this is not correct, uh, in PRE. So to uh, reproduce this S-shaped uh, shear thickening curve. So this blue is uh, red control and black is shear uh, stress control. So just I skip a bit uh, detail of the method. So over damped dynamics uh, stokes number is uh, vanishingly small. And actually due to this uh, governing equation is this force balance equation. So. Uh, we, ha we should have this hydramic interaction. Then we also have uh, non hydramic forces, Brownian force, contact force, repulsive force, et cetera. And uh, just uh, in my formulation, just uh, I draw F, but it includes torques. So particle can rotate. And the hydramic interaction part, uh, simplest one is actually this way. So following the Stokes equation and uh, 
resistance force is actually proportional to velocity, so like Stokes drag. And this can be a uh, many body. And this is uh, uh, in resting fluid, but if you are interested in rheology, we also need to combine, uh, couple with uh, some impulse flow. I will clarify this more later. Anyway, uh, this is actually an uh, essential part of the suction dynamics. And uh, my simulation uh, focuses on dense regime, so I just keep uh, lubrication force and I neglect many body force. Uh, because of the screening effect in very, very, very crowded situation. So, so this is an uh, idea of uh, inertial rest dynamics. Just all particle displacement is actually computed by this uh, mobility uh, formulation. So if you particle is pushed, you push particle, then they move with according to the hydraulic interaction, right? And this is uh, just an investing fluid, and if you put this framework in flow for rheology, uh, formulation is a bit modified. You have to couple uh, force uh, impose flow like this. So velocity gradient, you, you want to impose uh, sim some simple shear or like extensional flow. So velocity gradient is constant, uniform, homogeneous. And then uh, you can uh, calculate what is the background flow or a rate of deformation tensor. And uh, not, okay, this is, of course, should be enough if you can simulate infinite size, but if uh, simulation size uh, is actually finite, we need to introduce some boundary, some periodic boundary condition can be uh, deformed accordingly. And uh, today I'm talking about stress control rheology. And the rate control rheology is a natural uh, for to close, uh, natural in the sense that uh, we need to close uh, continuum equation uh, because uh, this part, constitution is missing. So velocity gradient to stress is the very natural direction like this. But uh, to study uh, uh, this opposite direction is uh, necessary, in inevitable. So, but general formulation is very difficult. So uh, not to stress tensor to uh, velocity gradient tensor, but just uh, restrict uh, single parameter to single parameter. So <laughs> input is this uh, scalar value, shear stress, and we don't know as others. Then uh, output response is gamma dot. So the, it means flow may flow more different way, but uh, we restrict uh, one shape. But this is uh, done in experimental rheometer. If you put fluid between two slides and flow, you already uh, impose certain flow type, right? So this is what I do. do. And the missing component is now uh, like this. So anyway, uh, the striking difference or important part is uh, we can, uh, thanks to the uh, zero inertia, we can solve this force balance equation and this uh, stress equality simultaneously. I mean, we do not, we don't need to iterate uh, some dynamic process uh, to satisfy this force balance and uh, stress balance. So we need to update the position, but we don't know gamma dot. But just I uh, factorize gamma dot and just then the D hat is just shape, of, I mean, constant, uh, constant tensor. Uh, gamma dot is unknown, it's okay. And then this linear algebra, this part, actually uh, right side is this D hat, which does not include gamma dot, just gamma dot is here. And to find gamma dot, we solve this uh, stress equality, particle, particle force contribution and deformation contribution, but again, gamma dot is factorized. And then X, Y, we at, at least input this X, Y element of stress tensor so we can determine this gamma dot. This is a stress control algorithm. Uh, then uh, this is a bit general, so I focus on one uh, more specific system today. I mean, non hydraulic force is just contact force. It can be Brownian force or repulsive force, but today just uh, 
contact force, I mean, to uh, make things clear and simpler and clear. And this kind of uh, force is a little bit uh, tricky to introduce. I mean, we know colloid um, made by silicon, uh, silica or such things is very uh, stiff, very, very stiff compared to the stress range you, uh, we uh, study in Leometer. So, I mean, 70 gigapascal or such things, so particle must be very, very hard. And, but in simulation, it is very difficult to uh, impose such a constraint. So somehow we need some softness, but uh, it's okay. We just um, use this kind of uh, model, DEM simulation, uh, discrete element method approach. But uh, just uh, this is um, slightly different perspective depending on the, my goal. So uh, instead of calling this is a real elastic deformation, but we just consider this is a penalty function, introducing some penalty, counting penalty. Uh, they should not overlap. So then when they overlap, we just uh, add some penalty. This is, uh, of course, hard sphere uh, potential force, or uh, some uh, volume excluding force. Uh, and, and, and in addition, uh, we also add this tangential constraint. So no slip constraint. This is uh, other force, other contact force. So normal force and tangential force. So penalty function is actually, I track the uh, relative displacement along the tangential direction and stretch some spring. Actually, penalty function is a harmonic potential spring. So this way, uh, we can generate force, normal force and the tangential force. And uh, of course, this tangential force can be not so strong. So we can uh, impo uh, introduce some upper bound of the non-slip constraint. This may be called friction law. So the quotient mu is friction quotient. But this is just inequality. So th this does not introduce any specific force scale. So this makes uh, a bit simpler. By the way, uh, second point, uh, to, uh, one strategy uh, to select this penalty parameter is actually uh, ex I explain here. So usually, elastic material deform more if you apply force stronger. And at some point, uh, maybe they flow. I mean, deformation is too much, then they can uh, overcome this potential well. And potential here, sorry. And if, but if particle is extremely stiff compared to this stress range, it should not flow at all. And in soft constraint approach, I mean, not by considering that this our uh, overlap is not coming from a physical uh, deformation, but just penalty counting. Then um, one strategy is just choosing this. Uh, uh, penalty parameter uh, accordingly to uh, this uh, imposed stress, shear stress. This is, uh, of course, uh, the negotiable part in the modeling, I mean, depending on the purpose. And uh, anyway, uh, thanks to this, uh, the formulation is completely independent from uh, shear stress, independent of shear stress x, y uh, magnitude. So sine direction or shape remain. So, okay, this is maybe, now I'm only considering simple shear in one direction, so sign. But in general, this can be just shape. The magnitude is uh, dropped in this factor and we keep it here. But it means uh, the result is all uh, kind of uh, Newtonian, quasi-Newtonian, <laughs> not rate dependence. Okay, but anyway, it's important thing is this parameter is constant over the simulation. So I don't change this parameter over time in, in one single simulation. Okay. Yeah. So almost done. But uh, what is shear jamming in this context? So displacement is governed this uh, linear algebra. Velocity is actually uh, determined by contact force and the deformation. And gamma dot is determined this way, simultaneously. This is a, a governing equation uh, to update the position of particles. Then, over time, I, learn, I start from a completely relaxed initial configuration by Brownian simulation. 
then I st uh, start this uh, time evolution following this. Then, certain point, system cannot stop, uh, flow more. This is jamming. So all <laughs> particle velocity becomes zero, and gamma dot becomes zero. This implying that uh, total force, in force balance equation, total force acting on particle, contact force is zero. And uh, you know this part becomes zero. So all shear stress is supported by contact force, not hydramic force, just contact force, then gamma dot becomes zero. This is a jammed state. So this, okay, entire formulation is force balance. And the jammed condition, what we find is this static force balance, right? So I will show you now simulation, just uh, rest of simulation uh, time, I just show the result of my simulation, so maybe it's easier to follow now. So this is a simplest simulation. So shear stress is constant. Then shear rate is fluctuating, but uh, beginning is very fast because the system is totally relaxed. And somehow we observe some flow. Okay, maybe ideally this is constant, then drop to zero. And this is a shear jammed state. This is a bit similar to uh, uh, this original uh, shear reversal demonstration. So some structure is built and reached to steady state. But this is, of course, uh, rate is constant, so all this is fluid state. But I can propose something similar in this context. So stress is constant, but uh, just zero and constant and reverse. Then uh, you can see uh, some flow appear and shear jammed. Okay, this part is, um, yeah, you may be a bit surprised, but I, I, I followed my uh, parameter setting strategy, scaling of a spring constant, then I can actually uh, insist there is no elastic recovery, but this is uh, maybe difficult to explain in short time. But important things is here, of course, uh, this solid-like state is only solid when your stress is this direction, but other direction, if you apply stress in other direction, response is totally different. This is one part of the constitutive modeling. Right. So this case, structure needed to rebuild from scratch. This is the one simulation, uh, only simple part here. So this contact network is built, force chain is built, and stop jumped, then change the direction, then flow again, but at certain point it stop again. So in this way, uh, they build contact network this way and this way. You s may find uh, dominant force chain is 45 degree, uh, sorry, 135 degree and 45 degree here. And this is one, uh, okay, this specific simulation, it ends up at close to zero, but this is just uh, one case. So if I run 10 simulations, uh, this is totally irreversible process and uh, jammed state and uh, other jammed state is different state. We have a flowing state between. Okay, but you see some idea uh, of how to characterize this shear jamming. Actually, to get shear jammed state, it flow a certain time, certain strain. So this uh, strain can characterize uh, this jammed state. So I plot volume fraction dependence. What I observed is, okay, actually I ran uh, simulation at 75%, but 10 simulations, no, no simulation uh, reached to shear jammed st uh, state in strain five. And uh, one of na uh, 10 is shear jammed. And uh, all, uh, Above 77%, all state is sham jammed. And you can notice this is, of course, monotonic uh, decrease of uh, shear strain. So flowing state, this flowing strain becomes smaller and smaller. And uh, close to uh, convention, uh, conventional jamming point, isotropic jamming point, 
just close to zero. And this is less than 1%. So how you can distinguish this? I will answer this later. Uh, actually, there's some good signature here. OK. Uh, one interesting signature here is if I count uh, number of contact with uh, non rattling particles. So if particle is not participate to the force balance, I just neglect all such particles. Just I count this uh, mechanically connecting neighbors. Then I observed this plateau. So this is close to uh, isostatic conditions three. So initial condition is totally relaxed. So no contact, uh, contact coordination number, contact number is zero. And uh, under strain, under flow, in uh, during the flow under constant stress, uh, they uh, developed uh, neighbors and stuck when uh, the value is close to three, but actually 3.1. And uh, interestingly, this different volume fraction, uh, this coordination number is roughly the same. Right? Okay. Uh, so this is a signature of uh, shear jamming. Then you also notice uh, somehow rapid increase after 84%. Uh, and I also check what uh, particle maximum overlap. Uh, this is a soft constraint approach, so particle is overlap. This is maximum value is about 2%. Anyway, uh, this 2% criteria is kept up to 84%. Above that, we find uh, somehow significant overlap. So this region is actually signature of isotropic jamming. So uh, I think uh, the shear jammed region is actually uh, in this range, right? Uh, so anyway, the, I want to convey more physics of this, and uh, maybe animation helps uh, for my, my um, desire. So I just uh, show you some simulation result again, again with different visualizations. So especially uh, when uh, volume fraction is close to the uh, lower bound, the strain is more than one, two, or something. So this is very, very difficult to uh, get jammed. So I will show you the movie about this. OK, just I'm visualizing the contact bond. And the displacement uh, vector is magnified 100 times, so like this. The bright color means a large displacement. So, so they try to find jammed state. This black, this is jammed state. So all uh, movement is following the force balance uh, for each particle. So of course, uh, particle move when uh, force balance is not satisfied. A static force balance is not satisfied. And it, it seems uh, they can find some uh, st uh, static force balance locally or in domain, some domain. <coughs> but uh, this is not enough. This uh, force balance domain is thanks to the current force transmission stress pattern. So when other part of flow and force transmission change, then this domain cannot support uh, current stress then they need to renew this structure again and again. So this way, uh, they are struggling to uh, get the uh, global static force balance. The, this physics is maybe not new, but uh, thanks to this, our overdamped uh, dynamics, simultaneously determining this displacement based on contact force and deformation, somehow uh, this kind of corrective motion it's easy to uh, clear uh, the, uh, how do you say? Yeah, co corrective motion can be captured in this algorithm. But of course, then, uh, this advantage is this method is quite expensive, so I have to select uh, time step very short to achieve this global force balance. So system size is not so large, but still uh, some mathematical framework is clear, so maybe uh, we get more insight about uh, this uh, shear jammed state. So 
I just show uh, some few uh, parameter dependence. Uh, so far, I just showed uh, infinite friction quotient here. But of course, uh, friction quotient may change uh, the result uh, quantitatively, quantitatively. This is actually upper bound of non-slip uh, constraint. So this means uh, this can be considered as a microscopic, uh, micro scale or minimum uh, fragility minimal component of the fragility. So if you uh, change the direction of force between two particles, they, start, they separate, right? This means uh, this is a minimum unit of the fragility. Then uh, this is a, a friction, uh, friction quotient dependence, right? Uh, I think this is actually uh, interpolating from the two eyes static condition from three to four. And frictionless system uh, isostatic condition is four. And uh, infinite friction, uh, this is uh, three. And this is not exactly three, but uh, the line is similar. This is a result of a volume fraction, uh, area fraction 80. But if I connect all simulation results, probably I can draw this kind of uh, curve. And, uh, if I compare, uh, free, okay, uh, next question is, this shear jamming survive in the limit of frictionless system? So uh, to answer this question, I just ran some simulation without friction and uh, just compare, compare with uh, infinite friction result. And I observed this kind of uh, data, but in very narrow range. Interesting things is actually, if I check the uh, condensed uh, contact number, uh, they already stay in this uh, isotropic jamming state. But look closely, then I find uh, this part follow well-known uh, compression of uh, isotropic jamming. Coordination number actually uh, follow this uh, exponent 0 0.5, like this. But this huge simulation result in narrow range looks like a shear jammed state. This is not conclusive yet. This may be uh, just finite size effect. So, but anyway, uh, to have a, to get a rough idea of friction dependence, maybe this is good enough. The range is very small, zero or very narrow. So in this way, we find a shear jammed domain in the phase, uh, phase space of phi and mu. But I also emphasize in this simplest model, if strictly hard sphere, we should, not have, we should not have any force scale to distort this phase diagram. So we have only unjammed and shear jammed and jammed phase in vertical lines. But of course, this is uh, not real physics. So I just, I propose, or oh, I already have this component in previous work of shear thickening. So colloid always interacts with other colloid with various forces. One is repulsive force, some DLV or double electric layer force, or if particle is a bit more soft, you also expect some contact flattening. Uh, both of them uh, contribute uh, to switch from uh, normal force, I mean, uh, very spherical interaction to uh, non-spherical tangential interaction. I mean, in this case, uh, activation or interlocking of friction uh, generates some tangential force. And uh, flattening, of course, uh, because of the point contact, in this case, rolling is free, but flat surface, uh, rolling is not free. Of course, the uh, face area is large, so friction may be also enhanced. Uh, but as I uh, insist, particle is very, very hard. So this is only case of the soft colloid. In, in any way, in this way, if we introduce another force scale, we have this kind of phase diagram, which is similar to this part. Right? But anyway, um, I want to uh, make clear, shear jammed state is fragile. Fragility is actually a one aspect of shear jammed state. So I think this is a just a matter of definition of terminology here. But anyway, uh, this is uh, my, what I want to convey today. So just summary, uh, I'm not sure I can convey everything uh, to answer these questions, but anyway, uh, today I focus on this shear jamming. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
when you have the analog of a fragile state, what does a microstructure look like? Okay. Uh, yeah. Microstructure. Of course, this is not uh, uh, through analysis, just a visualization of force chain. And if you we share in positive sh <coughs> share, uh, we already developed strong force chain around this compression axis, as you, you, you know very well. And uh, of course, this force chain also developed around this compression uh, elongation axis, like network. But the intensity, okay, in this color code, color gradient, maybe this is not clear, but still uh, force chain, strongest force is around this 135 degree. And when you change that direction, this is of course extreme, I mean, shear reversible is extreme change. I mean, original fragility idea is actually any change of uh, reorientation of compression axis can may flow. But this is maybe a matter of magnitude. But is this, this is not a simulation where you have repulsive forces or flattening. I thought you needed repulsive forces or flattening in order to exhibit a fragile regime. Uh, I, no, I don't think so. This is contact force and uh, contact force, uh, you know, force transmission. Can you go is back to your next to the last slide? Next to the last. Yeah, okay, this case is actually. Yeah, so I, I'm interested in the. Yeah, this is a stress dependence, yes. And the hard sphere limit, we have a, uh, this vertical boundary. But I'm interested in the structure mm -hmm. of the part that, is, that would be identified with the fragile uh -huh. region. Okay, here. The red, I'm interested in the microstructure in the red region. Okay, this part is, uh, I didn't investigate it, uh, so far, yeah. But uh, thank you for commenting. Okay, uh, Ganesh had a question back. Okay, uh, so, uh, yeah, me. yeah. So towards the end, you commented on uh, soft spheres. Mm -hmm. So if there is an inherent scale for the stress, what mm -hmm. is the phase diagram like? I'm not sure I understand. Yes. <coughs> okay. Uh, this is one case. Uh, okay. This is a simulation result of a crit uh, okay, critical load model we call. Uh, this means uh, to activate tangential force, uh, I set a force scale. So if normal force to what is less than certain value, they behave frictionless particle. And if pushing force is larger than one constant value, one, then it behaves like frictional state. And this way, we can, one, okay, this is just scale of non-dimensional scale of stress, but anyway, one single force scale is important to make this curved boundary. Okay, other questions? Uh, Yeah, this is, uh, okay, this is not mathematical proof. Uh, three signature, based on three signature, we insist this is, uh, sorry, uh, different from uh, isotropic jamming. One big signature is actually particle starts to overlap at more above 84%. And uh, coordination number also developed above for 84%. And, uh, but anyway, I totally understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a jump state. And it's perfectly isotropic. So why would I need to? 
Okay, yeah. The complex things of uh, this um, jamming, shear jamming or jamming transition is, of course, many, pro uh, yeah, it depends on protocol. Protocol dependence is very important. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, and uh, this is actually one uh, specific setup. I prepared initial configuration with Brownian simulation. So uh, I believe my initial configuration is Summer, close to summer equilibrium, and the coordination number is zero. And uh, I just uh, apply shear and a constant flow. Yeah. My point is that when you show a phase diagram, seems to be relatively general in Yeah. You can jam it, apply shear rate. Apply shear rate, a jamming, apply shear rate is actually one big difference from my method because shear rate equals zero means, uh, jamming means stress in divergence, force divergence. This is, of course, numerically very difficult to handle. And uh, my method is actually, uh, sorry for my. So just, sorry, I just formulate uh, this uh, setup based on really uh, inertialist Stokeschian dynamics like uh, algorithm uh, to satisfy, okay, as you know, the movement is uh, only to going to uh, local minimum energy landscape. And this is coupled to this uh, boundary mo motion by uh, selecting by finding gamma dot simultaneously. Yeah, this way, uh, formulating shear jamming a specific protocol, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, thank you for your comments. Okay. Perhaps, perhaps we could carry on the conversation offline since it's, uh, well, let's th thank the speaker again.